Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage national television personality and national spokesman for the Libre Initiative, the wife of Congressman Sean Duffy, Ms. Mrs. Rachel Campos Duffy. Good morning. My name is Rachel Campos Duffy. I am a Hispanic woman. I am the daughter and granddaughter of immigrants. I am a mother of six. And I am a Catholic. And let me tell you something else about me. I am a proud conservative, and I am with you. I come from a family of Mexican-American Union Democrats who worked in the Arizona copper mines. My father was one of 15 brothers and sisters. As a child, he was a shoeshine boy and a young entrepreneur. He started his own piñata business at 12 years old. When he graduated from high school, he joined the US Air Force, serving the country he loves for 28 years, raising a family and working hard with my mom to achieve the American dream for me and my siblings. He didn't realize he was a conservative until 1980. At that time, when the burdens of taxes and regulation were mounting, even as American leadership in the world was declining, Ronald Reagan spoke to my father's hopes and dreams. When my grandparents and my parents immigrated to America, they weren't looking for government assistance. They were searching for liberty, opportunity, and prosperity. And they were willing to work hard to earn it because Hispanics were not just dreamers, we're doers. That was the America my father believed in, worked so hard for, dedicated nearly three decades of his life to defend in the armed forces, and wanted to pass on to his four children. And now, as the burdens of taxes and regulations are mounting, even as America's leadership in the world declines, it's now my turn to fight for the America that my father passed on to me. Now, as a mom, and as a Latina, I am deeply troubled by the direction of this country. As the IRS spies on the Tea Party, and the DOJ spies on Fox News, and the NSA spies on all of us, America's government is beginning to resemble the dysfunctional, corrupt governments Hispanics left behind. But what worries me the most is the spirit-crushing cycle of dependency that is ensnaring so many Americans and, tragically, so many young people. In their zeal to help, this administration and progressive activists who peddle their policies in Hispanic communities are telling Hispanics that they cannot make it on their own. It's a self-serving message that guarantees that we will need benevolent community organizers and the big government programs that fund them to get through life. But what have these progressive policies and handouts done to our communities and to our families? Today, thanks to liberal policies that disincentivize marriage, over 50% of Hispanic babies are growing up without the benefits and the blessings of stable married parents. Is it any surprise that Sesame Street now has an online program to help two million children whose parents are incarcerated? Millions of poor minority students are trapped in substandard and even dangerous schools. I tell you, nothing gets my Latina blood boiling faster than the hypocrisy of liberals who shut down voucher and choice and education programs for children while, while they send their own children to elite private schools that cost, that cost more than most Hispanics make in a year. While Hispanics have been among the most entrepreneurial of Americans, by the way, we start businesses at about three times the average rate, the present's economic policies nonetheless have been especially hard on us. Today, there are two million more Hispanics living in poverty than when President Obama took office. 
Millions more are out of work or underemployed. And the dreams that we came to America in search of have never seemed more out of reach. Liberal policies hurt the economy. Liberal policies hurt our families. And liberal policies are hurting Hispanics. Today, today, conservative organizations are spending millions of dollars trying to figure out why we're losing the hearts and minds of Latinos. While because Hispanics are a matriarchal culture, the Hispanic woman's vote is particularly important. Convince a mother, and you can convince an entire family. <laughs> so, as a member of this politically coveted niche demographic, I'm going to give you guys a little free advice, especially for all those fancy consultants and pricey pollsters and all those so-called messaging gurus. We want our families to prosper, and we are willing to make tremendous sacrifices to give our children a better life. In our hearts, we know that the enemy of upward mobility is not other people's success. The enemy of upward mobility is apathy, yeah. dependency, yeah. and a growing culture of entitlement that denigrates earned success. Yeah. We want economic liberty, jobs, and a growing, vibrant economy that can only come from the hard work and ingenuity of the private sector. We want immigration reform that lets the free market, not unions, decide the number and kind of guest workers and visas America's businesses and farmers need. We want the rights as parents to choose the best and safest schools for our children. And we want our rights as parents restored, including our rights to be in charge of our child's medical care. Tell me, tell me, how is it that when it comes to Obamacare, the President and Kathleen Sebelius tell us that our 26-year-olds are children, but when it comes to the morning after Plan B pill, they tell us that our 13-year-old daughters are women. The moral, the moral and cultural decay of America deeply troubles Hispanic mothers. And that is why we want a government that respects our religious liberties, a government that doesn't force Catholic schools, hospitals, and social services to violate our deeply held religious beliefs. You see, if we put labels and stereotypes aside, it is clear that Hispanics are conservatives. Ronald Reagan and Jack Kemp captured our imagination with a message of hard work and big dreams. But since then, conservatives just stopped talking to Hispanics. And when we did, we left a vacuum in Hispanic communities that was rapidly filled by progressive do-gooders promising something for nothing but delivering mediocrity and dependency, and along the way, an array of policies that are eroding our community's moral and religious values. Today, there is one organization, the Libre Initiative, that is doing what conservatives should have been doing all along, embedding themselves in Hispanic communities and empowering the good, hardworking, God-fearing people who live there. From English language courses to help with tax preparation and help starting businesses, the Libre Initiative offers services that empower, not enslave. We are a conservative alternative to progressive community organizations, and we are on the ground building relationships, earning trust, and helping Hispanics achieve the American dream. The Libre Initiative is proving that Hispanic hearts and minds will not be won back with slick ads 
or obnoxious robocalls or soulless, glossy mail pieces, not even if you print them in Spanish. <laughs> if conservatives want to win back Hispanics, it's going to take personal visits, honest conversations, shoe leather, hammers, nails, mentorship, and venture capital. Make no mistake, this is hard work. But the liberals have been doing this for generations, and it's time that we joined the fight. I invite you to visit our website, www.thelibertadinitiative.com, and support Libre's mission to help Hispanics and present a clear alternative, a clear contrast between the America progressives are selling and the timeless, limitless American dream so many Hispanics risk their lives to come north for. The Libre Initiative is leading the way because economic freedom, religious liberty, and the American dream have never gone out of style. It never stopped capturing our hearts, and it never stopped speaking to the deepest desires of the human heart. May God bless America. Que viva Cristo Rey. Thank you so much for having me.